Right, we are back. It is Friday, just before the spring equinox. What date is it? Friday the 18th. Um, and we have got Mark Atwood back for our mysterious and metaphysical. And hello, hello, hello. Hello, hello. How are you both doing? Good. It's Yeah, we had a huge full moon last night. And now we're coming up to the spring equinox, which uh, I did a deep dive a while ago that this is the real new year, not January. January is for the god Jan Yu. Um, this is the new year, uh, our, an our ancient ancestors when it was birthing into spring, which makes a lot of sense, right? We're birthing anew. It's a new year. So, um, so this is a very powerful few days we're in right now, especially in the Northern hemisphere. I know in the Southern hemisphere, you're going into winter, but for us, for us in the Northern hemisphere, we're coming into spring now. So huge transition, a lot of friction. Yeah. So let's see what happens. <laughs> and how are you doing, Mark? Well, I'm, I'm accidentally wearing mind control colors of the yeah, Ukrainian, we did notice. The Ukrainian flag. <laughs> um, <laughs> the total accident. I bought this jumper a couple of weeks ago and I never want to take it off. It's such a nice jumper. So anybody watching this who sees he's always in a yellow jumper. Sorry. It's just really cozy. Oh God, it's um, not smell-o-vision. <laughs> that smells good. It, smells of, it still smells of the sheep. <laughs> I like. Um, but it was St. Patrick's Day here yesterday, which was really interesting because you know the last two years has been it's been cancelled basically and uh, so i went out i mean i know st pat i was talking about this on the show yesterday i know st patrick's is a meme and that it's all part of the catholic takeover of blah blah of this country but and it got turned into a massive worldwide drinking festival but it was just nice to see people out in the streets smiling in the sunshine because this town has been like a ghost town for or two years you know um so that was interesting but what was really interesting is that in the parade is basically all the local businesses and farmers they just go past and say hey we're here we're here which is nice to see um but there was a really strange thing in the parade and it was these two kids dressed as right so they're, they're basically made these needle things walking along but what was really strange is that behind them were two men. One was dressed as Kronos, as in death, mm -hmm. Father Time. And the other one was dressed in the weirdest thing I've ever seen. It was, well, not that I've, ever, I've seen a lot of weird things. So it was not the weirdest thing, but it was weird to see it in this parade. And he was wearing a, a, a First World War, or looked like a First World War. Actually, no, it wasn't a First World War, but it was a gas mask. It was like a leather gas mask and this long leather coat and it was really satanic it was bizarre yeah. um so that was that was a bit weird and i was listening to you two in the car the other day talking to a really nice guy whose name i can't remember now um he's a musician david you know? cohen david. yeah and i was listening to him saying about how he, he he couldn't be bothered doing much recently and i've i've been through that it's been really like like kind of nothingness, <laughs> you know, I've still been doing stuff, but I don't feel like I've been very creative and I feel like I've been a little bit like, I'll just watch a movie instead and, you know, kind of attitude. So I've been a little bit, it's been a bit strange and I've been working with a shaman in the States who's been looking in, helping me out because basically I've, I've been under attack from multiple covens for a very long time and he's helping me with this and it's uh it's very interesting and if any of those coffins are watching yeah because intention is we'd like to say that too wouldn't we yeah i mean i mark i have too i've been under heavy attack for like three months i mean we're yeah. talking blood scratch yeah. i mean we're talking big and that's what actually that it's interesting you say that um which i guess that means we're on the right path yeah, yeah, yeah. And I've been told it's a coven as well. Um, yeah. and there's a, I've, I've, I've said a lot of it on my channel just to basically be like that to them because I know they're watching. But yeah. also, like, that's something I kind of wanted to talk about, too, because I don't think people know the difference between, like, black magic, demonic attacks versus, like, just entities or poltergeist or hauntings, like, or even extraterrestrial, like, the differences. And I was saying um, to someone, I was like, listen, when you've got, like, demons after you that have sent to do the bidding of somebody who who dabbles in black the black arts you know it mm. it is an all-out war in your oh, yeah. house yeah 
you know it. I do, yeah. I do just want to make an important point for people, though, because I've been down this road with all sorts of things. You don't have to know you're on the right path if you haven't got demons attacking <laughs> you. It doesn't mean, because I touch wood everywhere, haven't, but have seen a lot of things going on in other respects. But yeah. um, I, I, in all jest, I'm, the reason I'm saying that is because I have seen a lot of people almost attract it into their lives as a badge of honour, and we're saying, no, you, no, don't, you don't want to do that. that. No. Everyone's yeah. journey is different. Yeah. And, you know, the, 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 it's an important point to realise that, you know, some people do in this life of that and some people don't. And don't feel you're missing out. <laughs> don't oh, no. feel too you're, you. not missing, you're not missing <laughs> out. <laughs> no, and I, I find too, I know, Mark, you're probably this way as well. People like myself that have gone through this a lot. It's been since I was a child, these things have happened to me. It's just, I'm a magnet for this. For some reason, I draw this. And um, when I was at the heat or at the beginning of this, not the worst attacks, but the beginning of this full on assault, which happened in late November, early December, I was, I'd wake up with like blood in my mouth, like all sorts of stuff. I couldn't eat. And I was in my bathroom on the floor. It was early in the morning. And I was having this like, really like anger towards God for allowing this to happen. And I was like, why are you, I don't consent. Why are you allowing this to happen? And the message I got was because you are strong enough to take it. This has to be revealed. He said the thing, the thing from the art of war, don't ever interrupt an enemy when they are in the process of hanging themselves. And I'm not going to let you die. And yeah. That's, that's amazing because I, when my dad died, I remember being outside the chapel of rest and I just, I went to view his body. I mean, he was 37 years old. I was 17 and I was, um, you know, it was heavy. And uh, I came out and I shouted up at the sky I hate you like that. And I kind of got cut off um, for quite a while and I became very self-destructive, um, which hasn't fully left me. I still smoke cigarettes, for example, and I wish I didn't, but I'm still fairly self-destructive, even though I'm doing, trying really hard not to be, you know, and I, I got a very similar message um, because when you were describing that about the way that you attract it, for me, I'm kind of like, you know, I used to be a pilot, right? I used to, I used to do aerobatics and stuff like that. I was a little bit, um, a little bit crazy <laughs> in the, and I'm, I'm like, I kind of put myself into positions where I'm going to get into trouble or where I'm going to like potentially very dangerous positions. And I've, I do that with, with these, I kind of throw myself into it because I feel like I'm, I'm soaking it up on behalf of other people because I can take it, but I'm, um, you know, the word of the week for me is Watiko. Yeah. I just bought this that's book. That's come up so much for me. I know. No, it's, in, it's in our consciousness. It's, that's, how, that's what yeah. happens. It's popped up. I mean, I've been talking about my own interpretation of this. This is Paul Levy's book. Um, anybody watching this, just go and research it. You know, this is how I do it. I just go and buy the books and then I start reading it and then watching channels like Bryce's and stuff like that. But um it's popped up in the consciousness. I mean, Rachel Elnor emailed about Watiko the other day. David Icke did a video about Watiko recently. JCK's done a video about Watiko. It's just popped up. And, it's, and, I, and then what I'm finding is that when it comes into the collective consciousness, it's because we, we all now need to be aware of it. Yeah, yeah I agree. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. And, and do something about it because that's what this is about. You know, the spiritual quarantine is about us learning about our boundaries, about our strengths and weaknesses, and about learning how to be spiritually, emotionally, physically, financially sovereign. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what this is all. I think that's what this is all about. Yeah. Can I just show Mark that picture from last night? Yeah. Well, hey, yeah. Hey, I don't want any rude pictures. Come on. This is YouTube friendly. <laughs> look, look, look. YouTube friendly. Let me just share my screen. I've got such a small screen. It's ridiculous. Right. This was just a really quick. Can you see that, Mark? So I was out checking my horses at about 11 o'clock last night. So this is pitch black. So this is just taken in the pitch back of my camera. And I was out there calling someone close, saying, oh, if you're there, show me a sign. And full moon. And then this green thing just came down and just came mm -hmm. closer. This is actually quite close to me. And look, isn't it yeah. lovely? Yeah. That's beautiful. It just be, and that was just a quick snap on my mucky camera for my being in my mucky pocket. But it was just like following me around. It was amazing. And the closer it got, the more it turned into a heart. That is gorgeous. So I've had um, two, since I last spoke to you two, I've had two signs like this. I took 
my twin boys to the Comic Con in Dublin, and I decided to stop off at this animal sanctuary. You'd have loved it. This, this, this Airbnb that's an animal sanctuary as well. It's got emus, Shetland ponies, tarantulas, reptiles, just in this little wood hut in the back of this house. It was amazing. And um, they had a little fireplace. Um, so that was Tom Numbers ringing me. I was just going to tell him to go away. I don't know. Where's my phone? He might ring back. Um, yeah, he wants to talk to me about the Batman. Um, yeah, so they, they had this fireplace outside, right? And gorgeous, lit a fire, sat there. And as soon as my one of my sons came outside, I look, looked up and there was, immediately, there was a light doing the normal things I've seen thousands of times. And I was like, okay, so I'm practicing trying to communicate telepathically because I don't hear the words, but I get messages right so it all comes in something's happening and it, and i can feel it's beautiful feeling and within five seconds of that this amazing white light just came out of nowhere and it's this 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 kind of white i think i might have described it with talking to you guys before it's a kind of white that you can't really describe it's not yeah. like a bulb it's not like it's not like any kind of it's like an ethereal white light and while it was there i was just like Oh, you know, it's just beautiful, right? And um, and then the other night, two nights ago, I was looking up doing this because I talk to the stars every night, and and they've, and they've been quite quiet in the last few months. But then I I had something similar to that where this star split into two, and then it was going like crazy like this, and I was just like, okay, they're just giving me what they actually were doing was just confirming everything's cool and on track and just to hold tight and hold the line. And, you know, I know people get fed up of hearing that, but that's, that's what we've got to do. And we're all points of light. And, and, and I feel very, despite what's going on in the news, I feel extremely optimistic that things are going in the right direction. They absolutely uh, are. It's yeah. um, um, all I'll say now in the United States because of, of the algorithms is we have information now about a certain laptop that we all knew to yeah. be, real and now it's coming out which is probably going to bring into question a certain um we'll just say a certain ceo of a certain corporation legitimacy yeah. which we know has to be brought up to the forefront and so in my opinion it's like you can't unring this bell yeah oh. sorry <laughs> you can't. That, was the, that was the spiritual dancing oh. Oh but, but that's the thing too and you know it's so funny and maybe um because i've always seen spirits as well since i was a child i've always been able to see things that others can't and i always my whole life i tell people that i've seen way more bad bad spirits than good ones because they want to scare you because when they scare you they lower your vibration but what i've learned is that because they feel like they have to scare you it means that you're actually more powerful than they are yeah and you have absolutely. to own that you have absolutely. to own it like like you know ha ha just laugh at them be like this is freaking pathetic and i feel like a lot of these dark covens these people who are doing the bidding because this is i think most people watching know what we're going through right now is literally a spiritual war it's yeah. literally, it's all it is, is a spiritual war playing yeah. out in the third density. And, yeah. um, and their, their backs are up against the wall right now, because once this ascension happens, once we flip, where are they going to go? They can't stay here. And so they're going to try everything they can do to hijack and lower vibrations. And um, I know people keep pointing out to me, I've had tons of orbs around me, especially when I do the Magdalene series, there's tons of orbs that are around me. But I guarantee you, the only reason why you guys are seeing that is because I'm on camera. If you yeah. had a camera on you, you would probably have the same thing happening to yeah. you as well. You just don't notice it because you're not filming yourself. You know, that we, we all, the, the veil is thinning. And so we're seeing not just the bad, but the good as well. We're seeing our guides. We're seeing our law, our passed on loved ones. Um, my grandfather, my dad's dad, who's no longer with us, he had a near death yeah. experience in his 40s. Well, and after he um, had his experience, he never feared death because he walked Oh, you can't hear. Oh, can you hear we us? Can hear you. <laughs> Don't swear. We can hear you. <laughs> uh, can you sign out and sign back in? <laughs> <laughs> I can't hear anything. Oh, we can hear you. That's so weird. And I don't know why I'm talking to you because you can't hear me. We can say anything we like now. Bryce. Oh, that's right. I'll what type we... it to him. I don't him. know if you guys can hear me, but I can't hear anything. I can hear you. I just. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Hi. Yeah. <laughs> I was saying that's a good joke, Bryce. You could do to someone. You could say, 
um, you could pretend that you weren't hearing them and they could say all this stuff about you and go, joke. Can you hear <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember one time I was at, you know how like in the, I don't know if they do this in the UK, but like at the, like the Apple store, the Verizon store, the phone store, they would have like the music really, really loud, like, like yeah. type of music. And I was standing in there once and these two people, I was, this girl was ringing me up and the guy beside her was ringing up somebody else. And the guy kept looking at the girl going, this is so loud. I can't hear. This is so loud. And she kept going, oh, yeah. you still can't hear. Right. So I'm going to do sign language. Look, I'll put in the chat. Uh, let's have a look. Chat. Right. We'll just carry on here, guys. He must. Uh, yeah. I know. I noticed. I was going to say I noticed he was fiddling with something. <laughs> um, let's have a yes. look. Yep. That's what I thought too, Mark. Yep. What's going on? Yeah. It's it's uh. Um. It's what. Sorry, everyone. We'll just try and get a bit of a bad thing to have an interview. I have to put my glasses on for the track because my screen is so bloody small. They're messing with the system. Yeah, they. Yeah. yeah. But I did notice that um, I think because the messages were coming through, he was fiddling with something. So I think we'll talk when he gets back on. I'll explain to everyone about the experience I had trying to set this this meeting up. Yeah. But yeah, what I found is really lovely is that uh, um, you know, I've definitely been experimenting with, you know, you can you can call the good ones to you as well. And it's really important to call whatever resonates with you, your angels, your spirit guides, your protection, whatever it is that you want to call into you. We've talked about this quite a lot, haven't we, Bryce? About not don't forget to ask for help if you feel yeah. you extra support ask for it and remember i mean guys we're all we're all based on consent and yeah. so sometimes your guides your protectors can't intervene unless you ask them to intervene the dark side will always mess with your consent but they'll have to pay for that spiritually later on when they're when they're judged on a different realm but um but yeah it's like i have said this before when my nephew who's nine now when he was learning how you know you, you're a mom cap and you know when they get to that age where they're able to communicate but they don't know all the words and so they get they get frustrated because they're trying to tell you something and they don't know how to tell you like charlie would have a toy he couldn't get to work and so he would get frustrated and my sister simply taught charlie instead of getting frustrated just say help please help please to any adult just go up and say help please and it calmed him down that's what he did until he could learn how to say all the words um mm -hmm. he would say help please and so you think about that with your guides or your angels or whatever even your totem animals uh the animal guides that are with you help please and they'll be there to help you you know it that's but they need your consent you know, they need your consent to be able to step in. And sometimes in situations where they don't step in right away when you've asked for help is because there's something karmically for you to learn. And it's part yeah. of that full contract for you to actually go through that to learn something. And, um, and as God said to me, I'm allowing this to happen because you can handle it. And so never forget that, that, that when things happen to you, it's because you actually can handle it. It doesn't mean it's easy to handle, but you can. And that's your, that's your, uh, that's your superpower. That's your, um, you know, that you actually can take it and learn. And also, and not just that you can handle it, Bryce. Don't you think that also that there's something, something that's going to benefit you from it in the long term, a bit like we were talking about yesterday about doing something that your tomorrow's body will thank you for. Yeah. It's a bit like, yeah, you do need to go through sometimes some hard things to actually look at my little cat in the door um to actually you know to to learn some massive lesson or to learn just how powerful you really are and everything i mean um, Catherine, you know what's behind the scenes last three months a lot of what i've gone through i haven't even talked about on camera but the one thing that this has a lot it, it actually even though this has been so hard to go through and i'm so sick of it and i just want it to end i know a year from now i'm going to look back at this experience because there was so much i learned about myself so much I learned that I wouldn't have learned if I hadn't gone through this. And that's when what the devil will make for bad, God will use for good. Yeah. God will use that as alchemy. You know, the dark, the darkness thinks they've won up to you, but they haven't because God said, okay, here's my power move. I'm going to take this as our friend Shanti says, take this heavy lead, this gross heavy lead, and I'm going to turn it into gold for my child, for my my creature, my, my creature, my, this, this particle of me that I've put on this planet, I'm going to turn that to gold for this person because they then can empower themselves through this. And so for people who that, that's the, that's not even true for just spiritual attacks. 
That's true for the human stuff as well that we go through. So funny, his profile picture. Can you hear us now? Now we can't hear you. Can I hear you now? Can you hear I me? I can hear you. Yes. Can hear you. Yeah. I can't hear you. <sighs> This has I never think, happened to me. Right, I'm going to put in the chat because I'm sure you pressed ah, something. Ah, you're back. I, what I said, Mark, and obviously you'll get it, but I said I saw you fiddling with something and I wasn't meaning you weenie. <laughs> well. But just before we go on, Mark, do you, yesterday I, I've resent the Zoom invite for this meeting three times now. Yeah. So yesterday I resent it because Bryce couldn't see the original one. So there's evidence that meeting was in my Zoom. So when I went to start the meeting today, completely disappeared from my Zoom. And I'm sitting there thinking, am I going mad? No. And I had to check the email to check. And it was like, it was there as a meeting. It's just completely disappeared. As my mate from the West Country of England says, they don't like it. Yeah. And that's what they, y'all, 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 they do. They mess with our technology. They mess with our technology so much. I just yeah. called in my dragon because he's very good. And uh, I had to just pull it in because that has never happened to me. No, mm -hmm. I'm going off. But anyway. Yeah, uh, goodness. I know. I actually, I, I had this past three months, I found out there was some spell work done on communication for me. And I actually researched it. Yeah, there's a shit ton of spells people can do to stop communication for a person. And I was like reading through these Reddit chains and I was like, holy shit, people do this. Like this is, I, which, you know, in the long run, that's going to be, you know, high judgment on you because you can't mess with people's free will. That's really bad. But, um, but yeah, this is real. This, this stuff is very, very, very real. And um, it's kind of funny though, when they mess with your technology, because that just shows them being very petty. It's like, come on guys. Oh, they're, they're unbelievably petty. I mean, I, I remember... I think all of these things are on purpose as well to, to, to highlight these things. And uh, we all go through these things. And I just had a flashback then to when I first arrived in Morocco in 2014 and I had a breakdown, right? It was, it was really fucking strange, you know, and I was throwing stuff off the balcony. And I just collapsed. And then, um, and then I found out about the, 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 what do they call it? Stink eye or something that, that you Evil get. Eye. Evil eye, right? Yes, and I, I have a pennant to, for, to protect me from an evil eye on right now. Yeah. But I, I didn't know anything about it at the time. And I was like, then I had to research that. And I looked into it and I was like, this shit's real. Because in Morocco, they all know that the jinn are real. And they have rituals at certain times of night. They know that they come through the sink and the toilet at five in the evening. And they have all these things. And I was like, maybe that's why I was there. You know, that's why I ended up there to, to learn this stuff. So that when this shit really kicked off i wouldn't be freaked out and i think that's a really important message to like to reiterate what you said earlier don't be freaked out because when they do this stuff they're they're they're, they're petty but they're also um they're annoyed with us so we're doing something right yeah yeah and they know you're stronger than they are and um and i was saying i, I think you couldn't hear but i was saying you know I, the, your guides, your angels, whatever you want to, your team, whatever you want to call them, they're always there to help you. But as Catherine and I were talking about, they all, but the, the good side, the side of light always, always play with, they always respect free will and consent, which the dark side doesn't most of the time. And so sometimes they'll only step in to assist if you ask them to step in to exist. But sometimes like in my case, especially these last three months, there have been things that have happened where they haven't stepped in to assist. And now I understand it is because there was something for me to learn from that experience. Exactly. And it's and what, what, stronger. You know, while, while my um, computer was rebooting, I, I, what, I'm just explaining this to people watching. I just, I, I said, I, I call in Archangel Michael to clear all negativ uh, negativity and attachments and to clear this machine uh, with love, gratitude and respect. And then I get this big wave of confirmation and then, then, then it started working. Then it started working again. And, it, and you can, anybody can do that anytime. Um, and I say this as somebody who was an atheist for 20 years, guys. Yeah, and I think I see this a lot where I have seen, because because my background's in the holistic health side of things for humans and animals, and what I'm seeing a lot of, and this is absolutely no way criticism, because it's the same sort of, it's exactly the same as what we talk about the spiritual chat. Everyone will have their own individual challenges and they will appear to each. <gasps> Sorry, I, she's just come in the room and I wanted you to say hello to her. She, she came in for a reason. She's there now. What's her name? Oh, I've, if I could introduce her to Idris, she would love Idris. 
Midnight. That's midnight. Midnight. Oh, midnight. You're gorgeous. You can't beat a black cat, can you? Sorry, Mitzi. Sorry, Sorry to interrupt you. <laughs> no, that's why I'm always happy to be interrupted by cats. So what I was saying to people is that all of us will have different challenges. For some people, it might appear spooked to chat. For some people, it might be health challenges. For some people, it might be emotional challenges or relationship, whatever. And and it's absolutely fine, whatever it is. But I think Bryce and I were talking about this a bit yesterday, that it's like if you've got a, some sort of addiction, the first part of, of moving through it is to sort of admit the fact that there's something there and there's something that you can do about it because you can't sort of have it both ways. You can't sort of say we are the masters of our own destiny and we attract everything we want into our life apart from this. <laughs> yeah, you know, <laughs> it, it applies to everything. And I think when we all realise and sort of let go of that guilt, it doesn't matter, you know, so it could be a health, because I get people telling me about all their health or emotional related issues, which is absolutely fine, everyone, that you do. But the first thing is, is to take self-responsibility, isn't it? And sort of realise that it's there for a lesson. Because all the while you're putting the blame out that it's someone else doing it to you or something else putting it to you, it's really, really difficult to break through it, I think. Yeah, and I think you have to, I mean, our friend Shanti talks about this as well. And I would say, Mark, when you were off that... Um, you, this these last three months for me have been some of the worst attacks. I mean, it's gotten really bloody, like actually bloody in my house and um, all out physical like warfare happening. It's turned very physical for me. And I know right now I'm like, I was telling Catherine the other day, I was like, I just want this to be over. I just want it to be over. But I know a year from now, two years from now, I'm going to look back on this and be very grateful because as our friend Shanti says, it's the alchemy of, of being able to take that lead and turn it to gold. And for me, because this started with my natal chart being used and abused and used to manipulate. And so that forced me to actually take a deeper look into my Akashic records. And I know why they're attacking me. I know exactly why they're attacking me. And it has something to do with my specific soul contract. And yeah. so, and that's what I tell people too, like there's, everybody has a different path and different things within their contract. And that, this actually, God used this, the source, the, the light, whatever you want to call the universe, use this as a way for me to go, okay, this is happening. I have to now go and be a steward of this and figure out why this is happening. And once I realized what that was, everything changed in my head. I was like, oh, I'm a badass. And that's why they're attacking me. And so this is on no, you can't do this anymore. And so, um, and so, yeah, that's, so I, I don't, that's the thing, like when people get attacked like this or have poltergeist experience, don't be afraid. They want you to be afraid because that lowers your vibration. Well, oh. can I, can I do something to raise the vibration? Yeah. yeah. Cause the, the other thing is I've, uh, I've really, I spent a couple of months making a film uh, for one of my poems and uh, I released it and I've never played a poem on one of these shows could I play no, a poem? no let's make sure you can share okay share away just looking for it do, 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 do. here it is I see you twinkling in the sky, shimmering in Van Gogh's eye, sparkling as the starseed you really are. You've come so far, born onto the facsimile earth, all memories erased. Not one iota of your talents, of the children you once raised. I see. You never felt accepted. You never felt the same. Your friends and family, alien, often seemed insane. They pointed fingers at you. They laughed behind your back. Whilst you were dancing with fairies and angels, you were on a different track. I see. You felt alone, you did your best, 
you smiled through all the pain. They beat you and abused you. They knew you'd come to end their reign. As winters came and summers left, the leaves fell over years. The spirit voice inside your soul grew louder through your tears. I see you. They broke you down, they tricked you, they stabbed you through the heart. They feasted on your effervescence, they relished you apart. They stole your youth, they stole your money, convinced you they were right. But every time they ripped you open, closer came their night. I see you. Like the caterpillar at the end of life, entombed inside the cocoon. The hero's journey final act, when all seems certain doom. Those belittle words of faith and belief diminish amidst the noise, yet you hold on, you won't let go, for the battle you are poised. I see you! Deep, deep down, you hear the cry. In remembrance, you answer, yes. The fight was laid before you. To come is yet the best. Besmirched, belittled, tossed aside, you nearly lost your way. Letting go of all beloveds, you tried your truth to say. I see. As the veil had dissipated, as all the solids melted, the remnants left fought their way to sovereignty once doubted. You stood your ground, you found your power, your strength became unbounded. For you are the warrior child of this world, in your brilliance, our future founded. I see. Gave me chill bumps, Mark. That's beautiful. May I, may I share that? Again. Oh, don't ever make me run. I'm <laughs> sand you for a fucking poem again. You. I, I had to do the joke because it, it makes me cry every time I hear it. <laughs> that okay, got me emotional. Can I share that on my Twitter and all my Facebook? Yeah, wrong because that that was. I want to say, I, I don't know if I've said this on a show before. Um, yeah, you're, there was a lot in that poem that touched me, Mark. Thank you. And I know so many people feel that are coming together in this fight that have felt that exact same way. We are star seeds. We were not, we were sent here for a reason and it was for this. And um, there was one day and we do, we come into this third density world, this heavy, heavy earth. And we go through amnesia. We go through the veil of amnesia and we agreed to that. And I was uh, a few weeks ago, maybe a month ago, I, I take a salt bath every night and I was, Usually I read like a murder mystery, something silly in the, in the bath just to relax. And I all of a sudden had this, what I called a vision. And it was before I took this life. And I text um, our friend Taylor, who does this a lot. And I said, I think I had a vision. And she said, no, girl, you had a memory. And that's common. What she remembered, a lot of people have the same memory. And it was, it was me coming down to take this life. And I was in my higher self. And I was about seven or eight feet tall. We all, we all are a lot bigger in our higher selves. And I was walking down what appeared to be a hallway and there was somebody else walking beside me, but along the hallway were what appeared to be angels. And as I was walking down the hallway with this person, I knew I was not happy about it. I knew I did not want to come back to this earth, but I had to. And as we were walking down this hallway, all the angels bowed as we walked down. And I sat, we got to the room and we had to sit in these, like what I call, we call chairs in human form. And they kind of strapped us in and then this light opened up and we went through the light, which I think was us coming into this life, the going through the amnesia. And my friend Taylor was like, people have that same memory a lot. 
of coming. It's not a vision. It's a memory of taking this earth. But what got me was the fact that all these angels, what I pers- what we call angels on the human form, I don't know if that's what they call themselves, that's what we call them, bowed out of reverence to the to us agreeing to come down here. And I know that that same friend Taylor says a lot that whenever she does her channeling sessions for people, they're always thanking us. Thank you for doing this. Thank you for doing this. And how the the galactics, the heavens celebrate the fact that we volunteer. I mean, I laugh about it like the Hunger Games. I volunteer as tribute. Like we were the we were the dumbasses who were like, "I'll do this." <laughs> um, but I'll do it. I'll do it. This will be fine. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. Fine. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> um, so, but they they always think they always want to thank us sincerely for for agreeing to do this for humanity. And so, I for all the star seeds that's just, that have felt just tired your whole life and you don't know why you're a badass you're a warrior yeah and and we can't remember but that's the third density and you know there's a lot of people out there that feel like they're not doing anything but you are just by being here all right It's, it's you know not everybody has to get on youtube and not everybody has to do be healers or whatever just by being here we are changing everything and uh and all those people watching this that feel alone and lonely and like you're not doing it you are mm-hmm. you you are doing a lot and we're all grateful because that's what where we go when we go all means mm-hmm. i say it all the time and it gets probably a bit boring for from watching but you know it, it is the football team analogy you cannot have a team of 11 strikers on the pitch you're not going to win Uh, You've got the goalie, you need the wingers, you need the defenders, you need the midfield. And yes, the strikers might get all the attention because they're the ones that score the goals, but actually they can't score the goals without the other team members. But equally, as we were saying the other day, you know, we talk about the thing and everyone's saying, oh, don't worry, the war's won. Well, a football game's 90 minutes. You can be 5 nil up. (laughs) <laughs> it's not over until that final whistle goes. And I only talk about football because they talk about nothing else in my house. But I think it's all over. It is I now. Think, yeah. But it is so important because you can you it isn't over until you've done it. You can't get excited because you've gone a few goals up because they could have a real good comeback session. So it's about the perseverance. It's about like you said at the start, Mark, about come on, stick to it, don't give up, get do your job, do your role. Yeah. You know, don't try, don't try and be, if you're a defender, don't go up and try and score goals, stay in your defence, you know. Um, and I do think it's important because it's so, I'm, I'm going to be honest and say I'm really disappointed um, by how much comparison I still see in everything. And it's not about comparison. Everyone's got a different role and they're all just as important. Mr. T couldn't do what Mr. T did without us. Mm. I mean, we think about the, the big names that we see, the Kennedys, Mr. Teal, they couldn't do what they've done without us, else they would just be talking to themselves. You know, like we all have that role to do. And it is your soul con. Like you agreed when, when we, I mean, I believe anyway, before we took this life, we sat down and went through everything. It was like, it was like a big team. It's like a, mm. it's a military, you know, this is what your role is going to be. This is what your role is going to be. This is what you're going to do. These are, this is your contract to work together for this big, you know, turn this ship around. It takes all of us, a collective consciousness to like turn it all around. And we all have that a different piece of the puzzle. Yeah, it doesn't matter if you have a platform or not. I think if you're just even like, you know, holding a higher, Captain, I'm going to use your example again with the tuning forks. If you're yeah. holding a high vibration, and you're not doing anything on YouTube, or it doesn't, doesn't matter because guess what? You're pulling everybody else up with you in your neighborhood. So you are doing something. It's funny you said Mr. T there because when Catherine was talking, uh, there's one of his speeches um, that hit me years ago was just talking about never give up. Yeah. And he, he's been talking to us in spiritual code since the beginning. And I remember when he first appeared, started running for president, I was like, Donald Trump, what? <laughs> and yeah. I was driving, I was driving along in my four by four one day. And then it just, and I was listening to him and then it, I had to stop the car because I was like, I know this guy, this guy's, mm-hmm. this isn't normal. This is not a guy. This is not a politician. No. Yeah. This, he's saying stuff. He's saying stuff <laughs> that is speaking to my soul. It wasn't, you know, speaking to my head. And there was this really weird I had a really weird meeting in um, 
posh hotel in the middle of Marrakesh with somebody who was woke. Should we say woke? Right. And we were talking, we just happened to talk, we'd had lunch and we happened to talk about the elections. And I said something to her, well, and she went, I said something about Donald Trump, something positive. And she went, you can't be serious. Right. Like she was really freaked out. I think this is what, 2015 or 14, no, 16, wouldn't it have been the election year. And, and I said, well, at the very least, you can't possibly want which mm-hmm. and when i said that this is really t- metaphysically strange right she literally stood up moved about 10 feet back to the glass like really quickly and was pushing herself along the glass like this trying to ring her husband to pick her up can you come and pick me up it was like that and, and i was like looking at her going what are you doing and it was the spirit mm-hmm. and 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 the spirit the, the demon inside her didn't like it. And that's what this is. You know, when often when people get irritated with you, it's the demon inside that's being irritated. Yep. And that's a great sign that you're um, on the right path if you start speaking stuff and you irritate people. I irritate loads of people. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, I've lost like so many friends, but I made all my soul family back. So that's okay. Yeah. 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 I've, I've always been called the most irritating member of my family. <laughs> And even the teachers used to move me to the back of the class because I was so annoying they couldn't bear me near them any longer. <laughs> when I first walked into school in 1980 in the, in the science class, Mrs. Brown, she within about 10 minutes, she'd nicknamed me Trouble. And I was at the, she had me at the front so she'd keep an eye on me. <laughs> yeah. Oh. I was Catherine West is a pest. <laughs> to say. <laughs> And I was, but my twin sister was equally as bad in a different way. So they really had their hands full. Yeah. Um, but I mean, in terms of sort of also, I think that's quite a good thing for people to recognize themselves because a lot of people are people who are going to watch anything that us guys do. They're going to be the type of people that are open minded and open to things, but they might be sometimes quite surprised, don't you think, by the reactions that they have and how they respond. And I'm sure we've all got plenty of examples from our own lives about things that trigger us and and how we respond. And one of the things I'd like to say to people is just picking up on what you've just said then, Mark, is, is you don't know if there's someone else manipulating your reaction for not a positive reason and just even having that thought in your awareness can be really useful and the biggest thing I've learned over the last two years and yes I should have learned it years ago perhaps but hey slow learn on this one is to pause before reacting and thinking is this me reacting or is it something else or someone else reacting that's really interesting um sorry Bryce I'm gonna button on this one um so since I saw you i i did it did i i think i've done a live talk since i've spoken to you i think Mm. i think it was since i spoke to you and it was it was about three hours drive away in this beautiful town and it was organized by the guy that set up a a facebook page on uh last year called a mandate free island and i saw this facebook page go from like two thousand to twenty thousand in a in a day because when they brought in the market for the little kids and um which was a very ag- aggravating time for me personally as well. And it, it, he, set this, he set up this festival and it was a creative festival. And um, I was like, yeah, I'll come and talk because that'd be great. Um, you know, 200 awake people. Amazing. And as I was in this room and so many strange things happened. Like I was going to take my friend with me, but um, he turned up at my house just as I was about to leave. And he was like, he was, he was, possessed. he wasn't there. He was possessed and he was blocking me in my drive. And I had to scream at him to get him out of my drive. And I was like, okay, this is what's going on. Right. And then when I get there, all the audio visual stuff doesn't work. Absolutely none of it. Mm-hmm. And I never plan what I'm, when I do public speaking about this stuff or about marketing or whatever, I never plan it. I just let my higher self guide me. Mm-hmm. And it was, and literally just as I got the microphone started to work, Five seconds before I started speaking, my voice went. And I was suddenly, I was like going from this to, uh, uh, uh. <laughs> I could hardly speak. The, the, the internet wasn't working. My computer wouldn't, put, nothing was working. So I got, I handed this out and got um, 
everybody to pass it around and do it. And um, after about 10 minutes, this butterfly just appeared out, came in out of nowhere and landed on somebody's shoulder. And then, and then the speech started flowing. And why am I telling you this? Because um, after I did my talk, which is about an hour and a half, I think, um, and I demonstrated the Tesla machine, I think I've shown you that before. Um, I had people talking to me for hours afterwards, which was amazing. And then I found out later that, the, so the feedback was, this guy, you know, this guy's really interesting, but Jesus, he's really out there, right? You know, and I was like, because I talk about this stuff all the time, I thought it was just like, I was talking about normal stuff. Yeah. So, and this was, these people were awake. Yeah. But, but the, le- the level of awakeness is, is, it was really good to actually see it physically rather than just in the comments on a YouTube channel. Because I think a lot of people that watch us, might you know most people are decent and, and wouldn't necessarily need leave nasty comments i mean i get them and it, you can tell that they're satanic trolls or whatever but yeah. most, most people unless they feel like they've, they've really got something to say wouldn't wouldn't leave something nasty so seeing it in person um was amazing was amazing and then there's a really strong reminder to me that yeah the stuff we talk about on these shows is way out there but you can i mean even if you don't like me you can tell bryce is is not lying about anything you can tell Catherine's not lying about anything and this stuff needs to be discussed yeah i i find that the biggest backlash i get from people is honestly my missing books the bible series and now that i'm diving deep into mary magdalene as being the christ as well the christ consciousness as well and it just it's it's amazing to me because i'm like here are all these people that understand everything that we've been lied to about but yet they still think the church is good they still can't see that the church is not part of it too. And you doesn't take that long to research King James, the King yep. James Bible. He was a Satanist. Yeah. It's all logged. And he took all the apocryphon books out, which tell you all this stuff. And um, yeah, so there are different levels and, and the, it's on, I mean, to me, the galactic stuff is so freaking fascinating because that's everything this is. Um, you know, I've said that before that we're, we're starting to see people's galactic heritage in their auras. I mean, that's why they said orange man bad is because he's Lyran and Lyran is the, the lion, the house of Judah, the lion of Judah, the, Ly- the, the Lyran group carries the Christ consciousness. Yeah. So I, there's so much of this talk. <laughs> yeah. The gold. So people are starting to show their, their colors. I know I keep people for uh, over a year now. People keep saying how much gold or I'm getting. I thought it was my ring light. But then when I started doing all this studying and I found out I'm Lyran as well. And I was like, this makes so much sense. Lyrans also give a silver color, a silver. There's the ones that have a silver aura. Um, well, and you have, uh, Mr. T was changing his hair color. He silver gold. Between that, yeah. That's yeah. Lyran. That's the house of, of Judah. That's the Christ consciousness. Well, did I tell you about the division I got of the line? Have I ever talked to you about that? Tell us again. I think so, but tell us again. Well, I, I was meditating and, and it was a really big meditation and I don't meditate that often like this. It was a really big one, uh, like a proper astral journey. And at the end of it, this gorgeous golden lion appeared and I was, and I was in total like, whoa, like, it was really familiar, but it was also big and powerful, but very loving and strong. Oh, that was amazing. Well, I, don't, I don't know. I don't yeah, know. That they're I don't the know. oldest souls. So the Lyran, apparently, Lyran group is some of the oldest souls. They are the they are the house. The Bible talks about the 12 missing tribes of Israel. They're not tribes on this planet, guys. They're galactic tribes because we're all, none of us are really from here. We're all, um, I just did a huge break on the, on the Kentuckians. Uh, the Kentuckians were what we call the Nordic. They were brought to this planet um, during the days of Atlantis when their planet was destroyed. Um, and that's the Nordic, it's a Celtic culture, the river dancing, that's Kentuckian. They're from, they were from a planet called Kentucky, I believe. And they were brought here by the lizards, by the Draco to harvest. They were good. Brought, we were all, we're all from different galactic places and like Palladians, I believe people who are Palladian, their souls from Palladian origin will start to get like a bluish purplish aura. So we're all going to start, they call it the flags of the different, the missing houses there. They're, we can't find these tribes. It's because they're galactic and our flags, well, you'll know them by their flags. That's the aura. That's why they said orange man bad. They were trying to get you to pay attention to the fact that his coloring was changing. And if you look around at other people, I've seen it. I've seen a lot of people on this plat on our platform and our group start to look younger. Mm. Their, their light bodies are starting to sh- gradually show more. And it's, 
to me, that is so exciting. That's like, fant- that's way better of a future than they ever told us was going to happen. I mean, he says the best is yet to come that well, we're going to start to understand these things. I, and uh, that's why I said in the poem to come is yet the best, because I've written a poem called the best mm-hmm. is yet to come. And I, and I think, it's, you know, there's, n- there's not a lie come out of that man's mouth. Mm-hmm. And funny you say that, because as, as we started this show, I thought you two are looking pretty, pretty trim. What's going on? I thought you just done your makeup, but you are looking, you look younger than you did last time I saw you. Good. And I feel you- it. I definitely feel it. Mentally, I've been regressing for years. <laughs> <laughs> but I also think it's because we're having such a laugh with it. And and the other thing I think over the last few years, really, really, despite some really shit things that have happened, not I've not take life so much seriously. I'm I I'm seeing the beauty in everything. Absolute well, not everything. Most <laughs> there's I don't a few. Realize that- this is why you you want a tail. Yeah, it is why I've, it is why I want. I did say to Bryce so she could tell me which ones of them had to tell because I am serious. Lyrans. they're like yeah, the lyrans. Yeah, yeah. And, and my mum's always saying to me, "Why are you looking so orange?" And it's not my makeup. <laughs> so, but it is really funny because um, I just think I've come to the realization what we will talk about today about we're all here for a purpose, but so are people that we disagree with. Yeah. You know, so, so people, some people have been put in to to live out a bad as a baddie this year, this lifetime. And most of us who've looked into our Akashic records, I don't think there's many people that haven't come across something in their Akashic records that they're thinking, oh, "Did I really do that?" <laughs> oh, my God, you know? yeah. I don't know anyone who's looked back through their Akashic records and there hasn't been something. That has been they've done they've been a baddie for ease of word in a previous life. So I don't know. I've not explained myself very well. For, for me, it's given me a real lightness because it really has shown that that everything has its purpose. We are all connected at the moment. We are living in a three D duality, um, light and dark universe uh, or Earth certainly. And um, sometimes it's so important to choose your battles, really choose your battles, to choose to concentrate on what you can influence, uh, because some of the things that you might be personally trying to fight against might be needed, like going back to the spiritual attacks that you spoke about at the moment. Sometimes there's a reason why you're going through things. So the more you get that awareness, the more you, you find it easy to pick which battles to fight. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. And, and I'll say, you said something in your poem, Mark, and I haven't really shared this, but according to my Akashic records, uh, you said children that you can't remember you raised. Yeah. I, in a past life, I had a child that was very important and, and it's, it's a life that's mirroring this life. And a lot of that had to do with that life. I learned through the Akashic records in this particular child I had. And so that hit me, that struck me when you, that was like a God wink. Um, so I thank you for that because that was, you know, when you find these things out and then somebody shows you something like that, it's like God patting you on the shoulder being like, it's okay. It's well, okay. That, that's what that poem that came directly from source. And I'm just the vessel. And, um, which cracks me up because somebody, so I saw somebody leave a comment saying, this is the most self-censored thing I've ever seen. Oh, now Mark Atwood sees us, it's okay. And I'm like, oh, you're kind of missing the point because we're, yeah. we're all fractals of God. And um, that particular poem is really just for, for everybody out there that um, has felt ostracized, hasn't understood why they're here. You know, you are seen, you are loved and you are appreciated like you said with the angels bowing down and i think that it you know we are we are humble creatures mainly and we don't want to think of ourselves i I certainly don't as as um as like more special everybody's equal right and um it is all going to make sense and eventually but we have to go we just have to go through this stuff it's just the way it is and with the bad guys, you know, David Cohen said this in one of our episodes, and this is a big thing in yoga. We had to have that resistance in order to create the friction, in order to create the change. And so okay. those that are karmically here to play that role, some of them won't be ascending. They'll go off to another life. That was their contract um, with, for this. And that's not for our own understanding. It, it, each individual person has their own 
um, Dharma, their own that they that is between them and God. And, uh, you know, but it's all magic, how it kind of works together. And so that re- it's like when you exercise, and you do like resistance training, you know, like you are lifting weights, that is creating a resistance for your you then to create a friction. And that friction creates heat and heat is what changes things. We've been yeah. put under a cooker, you know, you want to purify gold, you have to boil the gold in order to clean the top off. That's what's happening to us collectively and individually is we're in that 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 intense heat right now. And that is, you can't, that's, you can't change without it. Like you have to have that. So some of these people are playing that role, have agreed. I'm not talking about the specific, like really bad guys in the 1%. They have their own thing happening, but even in our own lives, individuals who've pushed back, you're right, Catherine, they have that role to play because Mm -hmm. that, that was their agreement in this battle was to play that resistance to get us, because we did come in here with an amnesia, we came in through the veil, but to get us to have that friction to then start to spark that memory and spark that action. And it's quite, when you when you can sit back and kind of look at it from a bigger picture, it's quite beautiful. Everybody's mm. role has been very beautifully played. Well, you can't make diamonds and pearls without massive pressure. Mm. Boom, yes. Boom shakala. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> kind of ironic, but going back to something that Mike, uh, Mike, Mark said earlier, when you were saying about when you're communicating, um, uh, you know, with beings from other planets and things like that, it's not voices you hear, it's like feelings and things. That's very much how I communicate with the animals. I mean, some people hear the voices, some people, I just don't, I feel it for, because of physically I know exactly what's wrong because I feel it in my body but also I just feel it and uh, there was a beautiful I was just quickly looking it up um Danny Henderson the spiritual coach she did a really lovely interview with Reverend Dr Chris Lemon and and there's a just a monkey story halfway through that where he goes in in Costa Rica and everyone's afraid of this monkey because it's going to start throwing things and and he's sitting there and and having a conversation with it but it's exactly what your poem's about, as I see you. What what a lot of people don't realise is you can do this with everything, with your cat, with the trees, with the things. Now, we all know this because we all think this normal, but it's ironic because we're sitting here all talking a lot, but when you stop talking and you connect in and you really listen, and he he's not an animal communicator as he thinks he just sat there and saw this being and felt its emotion and understood what it needed had a conversation with it and then they both calmly left together it's really worth you listening to that interview to get the message and this is what I think this time you know again we're going back to with ego and things like this it's like listening and getting those messages and then it leads us where to do our next bit of research but then you've got to stop and listen again and just that lovely evolving pattern that we've got of sort of action quietness action quietness because you've got to embody it all yeah yeah i'll get i'll listen to that i like danny she's brilliant i'll uh, i'll go and listen to that um it's funny you mentioned this because i was actually thinking this morning about how my relationship with midnight has developed in the last year and is a completely psychic relationship. Mm. I know exactly when she's hungry, whether she likes the food or not, when she wants to go out and she's communicating with me all the time. And it's just wonderful. I know if I told you the story about how she arrived, she just turned up. Mm. I had a dream about her. And then two nights later, she was there and she turned up at midnight, which is why she's midnight apart from the fact that she's pitch black. Um, and it's a real gift, isn't it? The, the oh, support. massive. Yeah. And she's softened me. Yeah. She has. I never used to like. I thought I didn't like cats. You know, I thought. I I hear that with so many people, and then they're transformed because dogs. I mean, obviously, we adore dogs. Bryce adores dogs, and dogs I love. But but dogs, in a lot of ways, let you as a human get away with murder because they (laughs) start with so much. Cats are completely different, and it's just absolutely amazing what you get back from them when yeah. you put it in and what i keep saying with any animal what, what you put in is returned back to you sort of tenfold and isn't that the same with all of this that we're talking about well it's interesting if you happen to be lyran too which that would be up for you to figure out with a, someone who can do that you're feline mm. lyrans are feline so you know it might be the universe saying oh guess what you have more in common with this race of species on the earth than you actually think because 
you might be Lyran, you know, because I I've always been a dog. I mean, my dog, Ravi from um, a rescue from India, like I know he's one of my guides. I know he is like there's he the way he came to me was so just incidental. And um, I know he definitely but they, yeah, dogs won't just let you get away with murder. They'll help you with it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like oh, we're doing this together. Like they, <laughs> so they'll, they'll help you with it, too. <laughs> so, um, you know, but yeah, there's always some synchronicities in the way that God, you know, and our friend Shanti says this. God doesn't speak to you in a big, booming voice. It's um, usually a very calm whisper. Subtle. Yeah. And you, you ha- you'll you see it. And usually you'll get that those chill bumps when you realize that he's telling you something. He, she, source is telling you something right now. Yeah. Um, and so, and it's always, it always comes right at the right time. I don't know. Did you guys, do you guys watch James Gilliland from e- e- Seti? Mm-mm. No. Uh, he, 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 e- Seti is this place in the States near a, near a mountain, which is um, a place of incredible um paranormal metaphysical activity like there's ufos there's ships there's leprechauns there's all sorts of you know creatures uh, uh bigfoot um all that kind of stuff i think he was on with i think he was on with tarot by janine one day and um she he, he he literally was morphing into a lion and he said that, that everybody sees it you know loads of people have said that about him and this is when i first really started thinking about how this is happening and how we are we are uh, slowly starting to see our true selves you know mm-hmm. it, it, I'm, I, I like his show anyway because he talks about ufos and that's not my favorite subject but um he's worth looking at if you've not seen well, it i'll definitely look oh god i'm so happy i have a friend who's laren as well and she has just this gorgeous hair and i was like all right. When you decided to come to Earth, you made a deal with them. You said, "If I have to come into human body, you're going to let me keep my mane." Because her hair is just so gorgeous. It's very much that lion like. Would you look at Trump's hair? I mean, no one has hair like him. And then you look at the galactic lineage, and you're like, "Oh, uh, okay. I, I see. I see. I see what's happening here." You know. I, so- I don't know. I think I think I come from a race of short, short assed bald um, uh, alcoholics. Oh, the Irish. Yes. That's <laughs> Oh, we'll look out for that. Oh, my God. So I suppose we'd better get on because better let Mark get on with everything we're doing. Anything else you want to share? Because these are such fun, these chats. We can just go wherever we want with them. Well, I have to say this, this has been really emotional, this one. Mm-hmm. And every time you've been speaking, I've been getting these rushes mm-hmm. of energy. And I just really enjoyed that and hope people watching it did. Um, yeah. Well, Mark, um, I uh, have to get together in person. We've got to. Bryce, well, I'm going to put my, because yeah. I know that people can't, the ch- I'm not, I'm not putting my phone number out. Mark, I'm putting my phone number here. I know Catherine has it too. If you uh, want to s- signal me or something, um, I can put you in touch with someone who can figure out your lineage if you, if you want to know. No, I do. I do. I'd love to I do have that. Signal, my WhatsApp is not working. I think that happened with the spell. I haven't been able to use WhatsApp for a while, but it's signal. You, if you use a signal app, you can message me or just iPhone message. And I can put you in touch with uh, someone who can help you figure out if that's something you want to know. Up to well, you. I do. I do. I mean, I did. I did do a past life regression a couple of years ago, and I was a, a tall blue Arcturian type creature. But I don't know. I don't know. Well, I can find the origin where it originated because you could have been that in one life, but where your soul actually originated from. That'd be so. You know, who who wouldn't want to know that? Exactly I, right. It's so cool. <laughs> You're like, whoa! Like, I'm in, I'm so cool. Like that's just, <laughs> I'm, I'm really cool. Like, that's how you feel when you look at that stuff. So yeah, but if they turn, if they turn around and say yes, your soul originated oh in a council estate in Manchester, <laughs> I'll be like, oh shit. Damn it. No. <laughs> Yeah, but then we'll just make it up. No, I've got nothing so against Scouts and States of Manchester, by the way. I've had some of my oh. best times there. I just want to say that. <laughs> some people can't take a joke. I know, I know. Oh, oh, honestly, such good fun. I just can't wait. Bryce, you can come to the UK now with no restrictions. You've got no excuse. I'm telling really? you guys, I think our, yes. our comments are way closer than we think they are. And I'm going to be really upset if it turns out we could have just paddle boarded to each other. <laughs> like if they really mess it like if we could just canoed <laughs> you know? yeah, because i i think i think the planes from london to new york they go up and then they just go around in a circle, <laughs> circle and around. Land, and they land. <laughs> can you see my broomstick on my little light above? 
it's oh, yeah. like hanging up there i've normally got a black cat on it but it fell off and scared the dog so yeah <laughs> so i can always come over on my broomstick so that's okay um, <laughs> but yeah bryce you'll have to come over here so there's two of us over here so yeah, yeah. You're, you're invited to a tour so well, i'd love to tour i think we're all going to be touring yeah me too and the, the, fu the future's really bright i know it i know i've known it since the start it's been tough but we're, we're close we're close we are close that's why it's getting tougher that's why it's getting even more because they're almost done <sighs> well have a lovely weekend everyone and everyone watching i really hope everyone i mean in the uk it's just a beautiful beautiful spring day today i hope everyone does something that really uplifts them this weekend um because yeah i think it's really really important go and do some of your favorite things this weekend and thank you so much oh. we'll be back as they say please 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 send me the recording because i couldn't record it because it all broke down yeah we will do i'll send that i'll send that in a minute see you guys, Bye, guys. Bye.